What's going on, groups? Welcome, and I'm glad you're getting ready to dive in. So without further ado, that's French for ado. Um, I mean, what else would it be? Uh, we're going to jump right in. So this week we talked Everlasting Father. We used John 14, 1 to 5. We, we kind of bounced through Galatians, Romans. Uh, we used some, some words out of Revelation, Mark chapter 14, verse 36. What we found ourselves hitting on was the hugeness of the idea of an everlasting father. But then the intimacy of Abba, right? And we're going to lean into the everlasting nature of, of God in the questions tonight. What I would challenge you towards is allowing that to be coupled with your own stories of intimacy and connection with God, but it requires some vulnerability on your part. I don't know that we can write good questions for, for that. You can't program random acts of closeness. And so I would encourage you as we talk about the greatness of God, really leaning into the everlasting nature of God, to, it's on you to maybe take some of the time and open up maybe some of the closeness, the Abba times you've had with God and share about those personal stories. Weave them together as we go through these questions. But know this, that in the end, when we talk about Jesus from Isaiah 9 being defined as everlasting father, what we see is Jesus Christ in that definition of being an everlasting father. He is the fullest reflection of our heavenly father. He is the father of salvation, right? Jesus Christ is, is the one who brought us into glory. He's the author of our salvation, the, the father of our redemption, but he's also the one who made us an eternally right standing with God, our heavenly father. And he is, um, so in being called that, there's this play on the triune theology uh, within Isaiah that um, comes to fully to fruition 700 years later in the Gospels in the person of Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoyed the, the teaching and were encouraged, but also reminded of how, cl how close you get to be with your Abba, with your Heavenly Father, and that you find yourself walking in a lockstep with him, maybe looking up a lot, kind of like we did when we were little, holding our granddad's hand and be like, what do you think we'll do tomorrow? Like having some of those intimate, close conversations, even as you have these conversations about his greatness and his kind of largeness in your life and in the world around us. So here we go. We're going to dive in first with kids' questions. Everlasting Father, that means a lot, doesn't it? Like there's a lot of meaning behind it. In Revelation 1.8, Jesus, talking to the Apostle John, says, I am the, begin the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who was and who is, who, 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 is, who, was, who was, who is, and is to come. Sorry, my dyslexia got me there. I am, I am the one who was, who is, and is to come. I am, I am the Almighty, right? So we see this huge image of Jesus Christ in that. We see that Jesus says, look, in Revelation, look, I'm coming again soon. My reward is with me. What is the reward? I believe it's our full relationship with God in unveiled faces. I mean, we get to finally see God and be in full relationship with our Abba. And he says, I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. So we see this big picture, right? Question one, why do you think the Lord, why do you think Jesus describes himself as the Alpha and the Omega? And what do you think that means? Question number two. Do you have any reason to worry about the future when you know that God is watching over us and he is everlasting? So is it reassuring to you to know for yourself that Jesus has gone ahead of us? He's eternal, right? He's everlasting. He's in the past, the present, and the future. He knows, he knows that. He's eternal. And he knows everything that we do. He doesn't just know the way we should take. He knows that he is the way. 
that he is the way. He is our path to a relationship with God. So question number three would be this. How do you know the path or the things that you are doing in your life are honoring to God or are they honoring more to you? Question number four, what are some of the ways that you can walk the path that God has laid out for you this week? What are some of the practical things you can do to be in closer relationship with your heavenly Father and your Savior Jesus Christ? All right, kids, have a great week. I hope you had a good time answering these questions, and we will talk to you, yeah, I think next week. Christmas break is getting so close. Peace out. Oh, that was like, that was Usher. Usher. Okay, adults, so question number one, let's dive right in. Does the, does the description of God as everlasting, does that make him feel closer or more distant from you? And why do you think you feel that way? Question number two. I believe that um, in groups, we get to be the theologians together. You don't always have to be right. You can have good conversations about it. So I want you to have some conversations around this and uh, work out your answers in real time, okay? So you guys are going to be the theologians on this. You're going to punch it in the mouth, see how it goes. How would you respond to a friend who asks, how is God eternal? How can God be before us in the, pa- in the past, present with us now, and in the future. How is God eternal and everlasting? Answer as you will. This is question number three. When you think about your own life, are you living under the guidance, under your own guidance, walking your own path, and maybe here's how you answer it. How are you relying on yourself to get things done to achieve the next goal or be what you are meant to be? This might take some time, but take some time and really talk about that. I think this could lead to great discussion in your groups. Question number four. I think back to my opening story in the teaching, right? My dad always just seemed supremely confident in the path we were taking, right? I love that. I just love looking up and be like, Dad, where are we? You know, we're this far from St. George. We're this far from the Mojave Desert exit. Like, he just knew, right? He knew this. He was confident. How can you, question number four, how can you be confident in the direction you are going and that it's the way that the Lord has laid out for you? Now, this has some nuance to it. Because don't ever mistake confidence for correctness. I think that's important. But we should be confident. Remember what I said in the teaching, that the Holy Spirit always reveals, teaches, and glorifies Jesus Christ. And so what's he going to teach? He's going to teach us how to reveal Jesus Christ. He's going to teach us to glorify Jesus Christ. He's going to teach us truth about Jesus. So in some measure, if that's what the Spirit's teaching, that's what our lives are going to produce. Clarity on who Jesus is. Clarity on how we are to live. Doesn't mean we know exactly. We just know our next step. So let me ask this again, and I want you to lean into that idea of the Holy Spirit speaking to you knowing that our everlasting Father has a view of all things. How can you be confident in the direction that you're going and making sure that it is the way that the Lord has laid out for you? All right, groups, I got to be quick on the group vine today because I have other responsibilities. And it's weird, and I'm not going to try to explain, but I got stuff I got to do. 
So here's what we're going to talk about in Group Vine today. Cookies, fudge, and goodies. Oh, my. Cookies, fudge, and goodies. Oh, my. Cookies, fudge, and goodies. Oh, my. No, you guys are doing nothing. No, it's too late. Kyle sounds like he was 13. Oh, my. All right, so here's the thing. Um. The Foundry Church is coming together for four services on December 22nd. I know that many of you, like in my house, like right now we have a lot of peanut butter fudge and peppermint bark. Erica slays it with those two. It's the reason why. Temple by peanut butter fudge right here. Um, but, But I know you do a lot of baking and goodies, and here's the thing. And if I can be so bold and so honest, um... You know, I've noticed that we've seen a huge decline in people dropping off the cookies and the different things, and we're wanting to lean back in, especially for December 22nd. So the table is one of those values we lean into every week, and I would like for December 22nd to invite you to bring cookies, fudge, and goodies, things you make that are special, um, you know, like your your kind of your thing. Like for Erica, she makes or peppermint bark and peanut butter fudge, as forementioned. So um, if you have something and you're willing to bring it and share it with us um, for the 22nd, that would be awesome. I think the best way to communicate this is emailing Lisa, period, Brinks, B-R-I-N-K-S. Yeah. And uh, lisa.brinks at foundrychurch.net and let her know what you'll bring because we actually need a lot of cookies. We're probably going to see a few just very full house all afternoon on that December 22nd. We'd like to provide them with your best Christmas goodies, some of our best. Erica, are we good to make some peanut butter fudge? For sure we are. So you get some Erica's peanut butter fudge. Maybe you'll get to have this shape. Yeah, and Matt, oh, stinking Matt. He eats so much of it. So, yeah, we're bringing stuff. We'd love to try. I would love to try what your favorite recipes are. So bring them and be a part of it. And maybe if you've never baked before and never been a part of hospitality, maybe you should because we need fresh baked goods every week. It's part of the table. It's part of how we um, bless the people coming in the doors. I love seeing those homemade cookies for people as they come in. People look forward to them. Kids love it. They treat it like breakfast here. So be a part of that. Be a part of our hospitality and our table starting on the 22nd and also maybe follow up in the new year. Bake a, you know, bake a few dozen cookies every month that you can share with the church here and bless the people who come for worship. That is as quick as I can do it. It is time for me. Maybe the reason I can only do it that quick is how much fudge I eat. I don't do things quick anymore. I run out of breath pretty quick. Like sometimes I wheeze walking upstairs. But that's a different story. Make sure you sign up for stuff. I'm wrapping up. Have a great week in your groups. Bless you. And we're looking forward to the Christmas holiday on the 22nd together. We are out.